nobody likes a hero without a flaw. So even when you're doing stories, you have to create flaws in them. Otherwise, people don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> Today's guest from Stockholm in Sweden is Nassim Kurashi Larsson, who is Sweden's most innovative digital storyteller. Nassim is also an author, public speaker, and a filmmaker and today works with clients around the world on helping them to boost their brand by using film. Let's have a listen. This is the Expat Business Hero Podcast, and I'm your host, Alex Congdon. Hi, Nassim. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Um, so, Nassim, you grew up in Stockholm, but moved around quite a bit in your early childhood. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Well, you know, my father is from India and my mother is Swedish. And, and they actually met because he came to visit an old pen pal. <laughs> At that time, there were very, very few immigrants in Sweden, actually. And um, after a few years, my father was in engineering. Uh, he felt that his career potential was not as good as he was hoping it to be in Sweden because also partly he was an immigrant. Uh, but he decided to start working abroad. He did work for a Swedish farm, uh, but we went to the Middle East. So he worked in Oman for a few years and uh, uh, I went to boarding school. So I went to boarding school in Lebanon and I went to boarding school in England also. Uh, then I came back uh, in, in my teens and, and uh, was in Stockholm again. So, so Stockholm is my base, uh, but I have also been working a lot internationally. And I think for, for, for me, it's kind of been natural to do that because of my background. And in the schools I went to also, I had friends from all over the world. So, uh, you know, I've been grown up with a kind of international identity. And, and that's uh, something positive that, you know, people with this experience have when they go into like global businesses and so on. Now, you described yourself as a digital storyteller. So what does it actually mean? And what inspired you to take this direction? Uh, well, um, I've always been in love with film and literature. So, you know, I read all the time. I, I watch films all the time. And there came a point when I, you know, also I think I was inspired because one of my old friends, she's actually a you know, huge worldwide author. Uh, her name is Marie Jungstedt. She, you know, she, she does... Um, what do you call it? Detective stories, kind of. Yeah. Uh, but, but you know, we were kind of best friends when we were young. And then I was like, hey, I think I, I would like to write a book too. But, you know, I don't really know how to do it. So I started, now it's a bit shy, you know. So I started with writing courses. So that's how the, the whole thing started with writing courses and discovering that I was good at it. So I got you know, like feedback from my teacher. My God, you should write a book and you're so fast and, you know, like that. You could write a book in a week. And I was like, oh, maybe I should. But I had a really demanding job at that time. I was in IBM and I had, you know, leading global positions. I was like working night and day. So I was like, there's no time for anything like that. And, and the funny thing was that, you know, my husband, you know, I read some stuff to him and he said, you know, I really think you should. Uh, write a book. Uh, and I said, I can't do it. My head is filled with work from day till night. I even dream about it. And then he said, like, what do you need then to do it? I, said, I need a year off. <laughs> <laughs> and so, we and, but I took it. That's what I did. And when I did that, I, oh God, I had so much fun. I was writing this book and I started with film then because at that time I started realizing that I'm a really visual person also. I love music. So it was like I was hearing the music and seeing the visuals while I was writing the book. And I thought, oh, I should go into film script writing. So I started studying film script writing and, and also, um, uh, yeah, well, the thing was, I started meeting people in the film business. And, you know, when they saw my book, they fell in love with the story also. So, in fact, people started fighting about my, my script. Uh, and then I was like, but I want to direct it myself. <laughs> so, uh, and I don't just want to sell my book and let it go. So, uh, and somewhere there, I decided to, you know, to try it. Because then people were like, but you've never done this before. Uh, and, you know, people, you know how it is when you want to change career, people are a bit skeptical. 
but you are an engineer or you are this and that. How can you just do that? And, and even yourself, you might feel, but I am no training. I'm not educated in this area. And I think a lot of us, you know, like well-educated people, we have this identity that we have a difficulty in letting go and, you know, accepting that we want to do something else and, and going for it. But uh, I was like, I became so passionate about it. So I was like, oh, well, this, they haven't even done a short film. I was like, okay, I'll do it. I'll see what, you know, what happens. Uh, and so I didn't have much resources for that. So I decided to use what I had. And I wrote a story with my daughter <laughs> and decided to film it. And I was like, it can't be too short because then I can't show that I can tell a story. So I decided on a format, which is like almost an, half an hour. And uh, then I started doing it the consulting way. I also realized that film producing was kind of close to what I had done as a program manager and strategy consultant. So I realized that, you know, you have to do your, you know, have to make your strategy before you produce a film, and which I did. So suddenly I actually managed to sell it. <laughs> and it became a bestseller in Swedish schools. And it was actually made at home with friends, with family, with, with uh, uh, people from my network, with teachers. <laughs> <laughs> so it was almost like a drama documentary, you know, with the real people and the real houses and the real. And so after that, I was a bit, oh my God, this could, went a bit better than I thought. You know, I was kind of, I started going back to consulting at that time. Uh, and, uh, but then I started feeling that, oh my God, this is so much more fun <laughs> than solving problems in huge corporations, in IT and so on, and outsourcing and all that kind of thing, which I've been doing. And um, then I thought, well, you know, if I put together my, my skills in the strategy and change area with film production, I can start helping others. Also, I started seeing when I went into, this is my story also about branding, like when I realized that I didn't want to go back to the big corporate world because I wanted to have, you know, com more control over my time mm -hmm. uh, so that I could pursue still, you know, some dreams around film and music and things like that. Uh, and I wanted to be on my own. I realized that, God, I don't have a brand. And nobody knows who I am. And I've been also in, like in global roles for so long. So nobody in Sweden knew who I was. And that, of course, was like a, you know, a credibility problem. If you go and sell to somebody and they have no idea who you are. And even if you say, well, I used to work in IBM. Well, anybody can say that. And what does it mean? <laughs> does it really mean I'm who I am? You know, so then I realized I'm going to have to build my brand locally because I don't have one. And uh, so I learned that um, I started studying brand building. I said, okay, you should have a book, you know. Okay, I'll write a book. And then people used to tell me, oh, it's so interesting to hear you speak about your career. I, you should write a book. So I said, okay, I'll write a management book also. So uh, I did that. And, and then I started with my promotion activities. And I started, I started using film and, you know, the, 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 the new tools that I had learned also. And I managed to get it <laughs> distributed nationally in the most prestigious bookstore in Sweden, a management book. So I was like, God, I seem to be good at marketing. <laughs> I got press also, <laughs> both for my film and, and for, for the book. So I was like, hmm, maybe I should help others in my situation to do this and to get these results. And so I also saw that there were a lot of people like me that had left like corporate careers and now we're into coaching or consulting or something like that. And, and, and they couldn't uh, differentiate themselves. They didn't know how to sell and, and uh, uh, which I didn't either when I, I, not in this way, not myself, not my own brand. You know, I was part of, you know, a huge brand like IBM. And so I didn't, you know, I was like, Oh my God, how do you have, you know, what, a, a personal brand, what the heck is that? And then I realized, you know, it there has to be. So I was started speaking on stages also. So that was also part of my strategy. And then I realized, you know, but as soon as you've done it, it's over. But if you film it, you can keep it and you can use it for marketing. <laughs> so it, 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 you know, it all came together in, you know, how, how can I build my brand and be successful? Then somehow during this process, I started rebranding also. Because I was branding myself as a consultant first. And then I was like, no, but now I want to brand myself as a filmmaker. 
<laughs> and, and an expert in branding. So I had to use my tools again to rebrand myself. And I realized that there were a lot of people out there who need these kind of rebranding. I used to be this, but now I'm that. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the story is also very important because usually if you're rebranding, you can still use your previous skills. And that makes you different in the marketplace also. So, so you've got this concept then, which you've created about boosting your brand with film. Yeah. Now, many entrepreneurs, believe it or not, are also introverts. And, and the, the idea or the thought of telling your story on film and, and online, I guess, just sends shivers down their spine. I mean, so uh, any words of comfort for them? <laughs> Well, I actually used to be shy, <laughs> really. So, so uh, and, and, you know, coming out on my own made it kind of come back. It was like when I was under the flag of IBM, I didn't feel it the same way. If I, somebody asked me to, you know, could you please be on stage and tell us about IBM? It was like, yeah, that's neutral kind of. And so I used to teach a lot in IBM, also in methods and things like that. I used to, but I, I didn't feel that it was me kind of. It was like I had a role. Uh, then I realized like, okay, if you're going to be branding yourself, you're going to have to be more personal also. It's not just about conveying a skill or a concept because, you know, if you're in a big organization, they already bought you. They already want IBM. They already want yeah. this, you know, so, so you don't have to sell it. But if you're, you know, wanting new people to be your fans and part of your brand, you're going to have to sell your story. So I actually started in, in Toastmasters. That was part of my process to practice on stage. And, you know, at first I felt so uncomfortable with talking about myself you know, and my story. But, but you know, th that's a good thing about that place because they – they practice that. Everybody tells their story. And you really realize that you connect more to people mm -hmm. who have told their, sto their story. Really. So, so uh, um, and the whole thing about storytelling is a lot about, and heroes, for example. One thing people don't realize is that people don't like heroes without flaws, for example. Nobody likes a hero without a flaw. So even when you're doing stories, you have to create flaws in them. Otherwise, people don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> Because, <laughs> well, from, from flaws to hang-ups, and, and one of the biggest hang-ups that people have, and you mentioned this before, but people in transition, is this whole question of their, their identity. And they, they see themselves through the identity of their previous education or their previous job title. How difficult was, was it letting that go? And would it, do you have any advice for people who are in transition about you know, making that transition? Well, uh, actually, this was not the first time because when I was in IBM, I became like a method and process expert. And I was actually an HR person to begin with. Uh, so uh, the, I remember at one point I used to say like, but I'm actually an HR person. And they would go, why are you saying that? And I'm like, well, I was educated in this area. And I, I kind of didn't realize how much I'd learned in totally new different areas. So I couldn't, you know, I didn't realize it. It was like, we are trained. And I think particularly my generation, uh, we're trained to, 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 to gain a profession. And that is done by going to university. And then you have a stamp on yourself. Today, knowledge is available in a totally different manner. And, and it, it doesn't matter as much if you have a university educate or what it is even. Uh, so, so a lot of the time when you make a career, yes, you will have some use. For example, I studied organization development. So that's always been of great use to me. But I added a lot of skills, which I now have a lot of use for in the film area. So the film production and all the technology around film was easy for me to adapt to because I had the IT background from IBM. And so problem solving, all that kind of thing. And now I've actually gone a lot into digital marketing also and the tools for digital marketing. And that was also, I realized that hadn't I been in IBM, I wouldn't have been able to do it because I've done it in a rather short time. So I think a lot of us, we have a lot of skills. So we shouldn't forget about the skills we have, but it's more like the title we have to let go of. So I think that some somehow we get mixed up with that. So we, we, we lose the good part of our story where we did get a lot of skills. 
And then we said, but now I'm a totally different person and I do this. No, not entirely. Uh, so, for example, uh, one of my first clients, he had been a controller and he was now into uh, massage. Uh, and so that's very different. But he hadn't realized, for example, that if he tries to uh, get uh, clients in, in a football team, for example, they're not going to resonate with him because of the way he looks, because he has a bit of a tummy. You know, they want somebody who's an ex athlete, for example. So that story is great for that target group. But so we started also discussing, okay, who do you actually want to, to reach? And of course, what he feels for is people office workers like him who got a really bad back by sitting all their life. <laughs> and that's how he found massage. And then he was so thrilled about the effects it had that he decided to become a massage therapist. So that's a great story. So I say, of course, you should be targeting those people that have the same story. They will resonate with I you. I get it. So you're, you're, you're not just throwing away an identity. You're using the useful bits of that past, of that story, and projecting it forward in your future brand. Yes. It's not about also throwing because, everything away. Exactly. Because also, if you think about who will resonate, well, some people feel that, oh, you know, I'm an overweight woman and I have no, you know, ex- I feel not so happy about my body. I don't want a young, well-trained athlete to touch my pudgy body. (laughs) They might feel much more comfortable with a gray-haired man with a bit of a pouch, you know, and and who has this this image of being kind of strict and, you know, analytical. And, you know, so I think it's because I was thinking also, he gave me massage actually. And, and, I was feeling also, I wouldn't want anybody to touch me. It's very personal, you know. So in that way, film is good also that you can see, am I okay with this? That's why networking works, you know. So, mm-hmm. you, you, you know, a lot of massage therapists run around networking because they know this, that people who don't know them, they won't just go to internet and say, which is the closest by massage therapist and then go there. No, they feel, I don't know who this person is. I don't want the stranger to touch me. <laughs> And it's the same with a lot of professions that people prefer to feel, who is this? Do I resonate with them? But they don't want to start calling them because then they feel like I can't say no. I mean, if you want to go to a coach and say, yeah, you can have a session with me and then see if you like me. Yeah, but then it'll be difficult if I, have, if I don't. And then I'll have to say no. And <laughs> so shopping around and seeing the person before and not having to, you know, step out of your comfort zone and then deciding feels good for a lot of people. Yeah. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Um, now, one of the things which I've always believed is it's, it's, it's very difficult to make it anywhere on your own. Um, so what I wanted to ask you is, you know, where did you seek help from? Either inspiration or knowledge or actual people that helped you, you know, in this journey, in this transition? Uh, well, uh, it was kind of funny when I went into the film business first, because, uh, I remember, you know, like the first course I paid for, uh, so it was like, uh, you know, a place where anybody can go and study film, but the better I became, the more networks I got into. And I suddenly started getting, I even got into EU financed program for professionals in the film industry. And I was like, oh my God, how did this happen? And I was suddenly, you know, with seasoned people in the film business and the theater business and acting business. And I was like, I was really thrilled. It was such fun. Uh, But it's a lot about taking the first steps, then doors start opening. Uh, And so so just start with the first education. Then you start meeting people. You start learning things. And and I also got a lot of stuff from the internet. So, so for example, um, I'm actually going to Cannes now uh, because I have a drama also that I've been working on. And uh, uh, I also found a person through film on the internet. And because I was thinking of going to Cannes a long time ago, and uh, I had this acting friend and she was going, let's go to Cannes, let's go to Cannes. And I'm like, but when am I going to do that? I don't know what this place is. And so I Googled Cannes and up came a film from a person called Stacey Parks. And she's a film agent. And so she started telling me and guiding me around Cannes. She even showed me a film of Cannes. 
And then she said, like, I have this network called Spin Film Specific, where, you know, I share all my tips about, you know, film, independent filmmaking. Oh, that sounds great. Suddenly I'm on her site. Suddenly I'm there. Suddenly I'm actually buying a course on how to, how to approach Cannes, <laughs> if you're a filmmaker, an independent filmmaker. So that's a process that really works also to, 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 to find skills, but also to sell your own skills. Like people are searching for something. Then they find you. You offer them something for free or whatever. It can be some training or something. Like if you're a massage therapist, it can be a tip on how to get rid of, uh, you know, bad neck or something like that. Suddenly people know who you are. And, and they will buy other things from you. And particularly if it helped, if the tip was good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you if you go back and and you know, this has been a, a journey uh, uh, for how many years now since you since you left IBM? How many years? Have you, oh, it's almost ten years actually. Years, okay. Yeah. I mean, let, let's pick out then maybe a, a failure or something didn't go well in that time, and in what you learned from it. Is there anything that comes to mind? Uh, well, I think that. Um, the f- going into a new area with people who have no experience of buying your type of services, that is a challenge. So like, it's, it's a bit like if you have a restaurant and you decide to introduce an, a new type of food that nobody has experience of. Yeah. A lot of entrepreneurs, they think like, well, that should be easy. There's no competition. There is no Ethiopian restaurant in this town. I'll be the first. Wonderful. Like, then that's, everybody's like, what the hell is that? No, I'm going getting, I'm getting my pizza. I'm getting this, you know, the stuff that I know. Suddenly nobody's in the restaurant and you don't understand it, but it's so good. The food, I've got the best chefs, everything that's top quality. Everything is great. Why is nobody coming? You know? So whilst the guy who sets up another pizzeria right beside you, even though there are three in the areas gets clients and it's like, shit, you know, how can this be? So I think this principle, because I'm like an innovator and I, you know, love innovation. In the IBM, I was working like with the top innovators in IBM and the newest products and the newest services. I was always head of the market. And that happened to me in Sweden. Nobody understood why film was important. (laughs) (laughs) And so, of course, nobody wants to spend any money on it then. They were all about homepages, you know. So, So it was like, Oh my God, you know, nobody understands that, you know, why this is important. So, so that was a bit of a shocker for me that to understand, you know, I was like, but it, it, can't you see, you know, all the Americans are selling stuff to you on the internet. And that really is so, you know, they sell to everybody and, you know, consultants, everybody's here like on the Swedish market and they take market shares actually from locals. So, so you can also yourself be anywhere if you want to. Uh, and sometimes it's even easier to, to become an authority in another country because you seem like special, you know. So I was very frustrated about this. And, and uh, uh, at, so at one point I was like, I don't think I'm going to do film anymore. It's too hard to, to, to try and describe to people what it's for and why it's good and how it's done. And nobody knows anything. And particularly not if they're a bit older. They hardly knew at that time and how, almost how to use a smartphone. You know, it was like now things have been catching up a bit. A lot more people are understanding. But I almost gave up at that time and felt that, no, this is, you know, I'm not going to do this. And, and at that time, uh, that's when I met, uh, you know, this American business mentor, uh, Kay Ninkes, who you also know. And... Um, when he, of course, understood all this and he'd been in the music industry. So I went to a workshop, a free workshop, and, you know, he was talking about the future and, you know, all that. And I was like, oh, my God, he understands what I want to do, you know. And so I went for the next uh, seminar and, and then he, you know, I had to talk with him. So I told him, you know, I'm thinking of giving up this business. I don't know if it works. And then he said, like, you know, small business owners – they can't really pay either for, for, you know, quality production, which is also what I felt that I had to do very low budget. It wasn't such fun in that way. And he said, but they will need to know how to do it themselves. And because I love training, it was ideal for me to start sharing my knowledge. So all the knowledge that I felt that I could share with people, I could share it instead in a mentor program. So, so instead that- of, 
So yeah. that learning pivoted your business into offering training instead of films. Yes. Films. Yeah. yeah. But it even improved my ability to, to sell films because when I've trained people, they understand what a film should contain. Because a lot of people think of it as photography. So they don't even understand that there should be a script in it. It's like, just yeah. film me, you know, like film what, you know? So a lot of people start, that's why I also started doing it from, to begin with, because I saw that so many people had really bad films, really bad films that would even, you know, decrease their market value. And one of the people that I trained, she said that after the course, it's like, God, now I realize that a film can even decrease your market value if you do it badly. <laughs> Now, is there anything, if, if you think about um, people listening to this, uh, to this show, a lot of them are you know, expatriates around the world who are thinking of setting their own business. Is there something about uh, an expat or someone living in a, in, in a new country, a different country, that really resonates with getting on film? Because they're, in a, they're, you know, they're, they're a little bit isolated, they perhaps don't have all the networks, uh, as, you, you know, as you mentioned before. But I'm just wondering how this could really resonate with people listening to, to this. To yeah, this. I think that, that they will be in the same situation as I was with having to build my own brand. Uh, so like my father, because he also started working abroad and he continued from, he went, to, he went again to Africa after the Middle East. And so, you know, I didn't, he didn't leave me with contacts either, you know, like in Sweden, I couldn't get contact through him, for example, like a lot of people do. They get it through their parents who are in the business or something like that. Uh, and and uh, so a lot of times people who have moved or not like in the same business as their parents were, it doesn't have to be from another country. They have to build their own brand. They don't have the contacts necessary. Uh, so so uh, using film is great. Uh, as you saw, also, I, I sent your film reference, for example. So what normally happens is that people that you know in the business, they will say, oh, I know this guy. He's good. You should talk to him and so on. If you have nobody like that, you're going to have to put it out there yourself. So the internet is great for that. But you, it's very difficult also to always blow your own horn and say, oh, I'm so great. You know? So you need other people to say it. But then you can use, of course, a client or something like that. So, so that is actually happy with your services. And even when I wrote my book, I knew all this. So I had a couple of people with prestige on the back of the book that says, this is a fantastic book. Uh, so both of them were authors, in fact, and management consultants. So they, you know, validated my product. So that's what I teach people also. You know, how can you validate your, your brand? Uh, so like being on stage is, of course, one. Using other people's brands who are established is another so there's a lot of ways of doing this. So, for example, if you're on somebody else's prestigious stage and you film that, you can use it forever. You can, so you can you like cut it into a film about yourself and things like that. So there, there are a multitude of ways that you can uh, create your brand. You can also create your own events. If nobody lets you on their stage, you can create your own stage. And when you film that and people see you on a stage, they feel that you're credible. If people are willing to stand in front of you and listen to your message, you must be credible. So it's a bit like you are interviewing me. Why? Then people think, well, she must have something to say because Alex is interviewing her. He seems to think she's good. So interviews is another way uh, of, of you know, being seen. So the best thing is to use multiple channels to build your brand and to be seen. But it's interesting because I started working with my daughter also, who sings. And, and uh, uh, she, she's also starting from nowhere. We have no musicians in her family, nothing. <laughs> Didn't come from you then. Well, I actually liked singing a lot when I was okay. a child. So I like music. But, but the thing is that, that you, you just start somewhere. So, uh, you know, we were sitting in a cafe and I said, let's just do, make a project out of it and see what happens. She's the one that I made the film with. So because she saw me succeed with the film, she was like, oh, okay, let's make it right. <laughs> and so, you know, I also started filming a little. So like she was taking singing lessons in, in this school of, uh, Royal School of Music and I now filmed it. And, you know, she, then she was with a friend and they were actually, you know, trying it as street musicians. I was there with my camera, I filmed it, you know. 
Then an old friend of mine, an old childhood friend, he's in the, he makes music. So I was like, oh, I saw your films, you know, could we have a meeting? And then <laughs> suddenly, and you know, he's got production studio. So she got an original song from them. And so, so um, I met, I made a, uh, uh, and I made a music video. So, and then I actually uh, crowd tested it and it came out with flying colors. So then it earned a spot in a, you know, in a music site. So, so, and then now we've actually, even before that, we attracted a songwriter from Israel who wants her to sing, you know, and I've got some other people lined up in London who, who do events. So, you know, you have to start by being seen. And all of that came from that original film. Amazing. No, it didn't come from the film. It came from that. We well, the, started the connections working. that you made. Yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't from the film. It was starting in the music business. Mm -hmm. So, so it was the music films that attracted somebody on my Facebook who was in the music business. Right. So it, it was a person I hadn't talked to for 30 years, but he oh. saw the film. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it, it's fun. And, and, and the cooperation was great, but the song is up on iTunes and, you know, there's another song and there's a video and there's, you know, and so things are happening. And she, now she's, also become a bit more confident she's starting to write her own songs and you know so she's got fans already you know so so that's how you do it you can do the same thing in any business so let me go back a bit and ask about whilst you were on this journey you know what was at stake here what if this hadn't have worked i mean let's say that i mean i think you are successful now but if this hadn't have worked out for you what were you standing to lose well uh, you know, my mother died of cancer, actually, when I was 40. And that made me think also that life is short, you know, it's, it's not forever. So uh, when, you know, when you're young, a lot of the time, you want to make a career, you want to, you know, you want to be out there, you want to succeed. But at that time, when I left IBM, I was working too much, the price was too high. And when I was looking for a job afterwards, after my free year, I had a discussion with some, you know, lean efficiency consulting services, and they wanted me to have a top position there. And they basically told me you would be working day and night. <laughs> you know? So, and I just felt that I don't want to do that anymore. You know, I enjoy myself so much during this year and being so much with my children. I was like, that's why I'm doing the music project also, because I love being with my family. And I'm like, I don't want a job like that. Then I had another interview with, it was Tata Consulting. And they were like, yeah, but we expect you to travel Monday to, till Friday and be away. And I'm like, they want to, they want to buy my life. Not just, my, <laughs> it's not a nine to five job. They want to buy my life, you know? So, and it's not, suddenly I was like, it's not for sale anymore. I want, I want another type of life. I want to be creative. I want to have fun. I want to be with my family. And I had that. So I was like, my God, I can't go back to that place again. <laughs> you know? So what's next then? What, what's the future hold for you in terms of your goals for the next five or 10 years? Well, uh, I'm really enjoying myself in the creative sector. I really am. So, so uh, you know, I'm having a lot of fun with my daughter. You know, at this time, this is not a, it's more of like, a, what do you call it, a hobby thing. But if that could start paying off so that I could do it and, you know, not feel that it's taking time from my other business, that would be so great, you know. So also being a consultant, I can't help it. I enjoy learning new business sectors. I think it's fun kind of. So, you know, learning the whole business sector and all the transformation and all the technical stuff that's going on, it's kind of exciting for me. Uh, so, uh, and also in, in the film sector, you know, being an indie filmmaker today is possible, you know, in a way that it wasn't even 10 years ago because the technology is getting so much better that you can even make a good movie with like a smartphone. It's incredible. And even the cameras, you know, the level of technology is, you, you saw also the drama that I, I, I made, you know, and, and, and I made it actually with a professional musician. He gave me access to his music. So I think, again, you know, I want to work with creative people. And also when I made the, 
the the film with my daughter i was also introduced to 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 musicians who wanted to be in my film so a lot of it is also about attracting the right partners so so for, for being on your own to begin with you need a context to be in also so that's what a lot of people miss out on that the first step is actually getting the right, right partners on board so that's why it was so important for my daughter to get songwriters so she, because it's illegal to do covers, you know, on, on actually on YouTube. So you need to have the right to, to market yourself. Yeah. And at that time, we're, we're not even paying for production or anything. So we're attracting affiliates, you could say, because they want to succeed with the help of us. So, so a lot of it is about creating the right partnership. So I'm still into that, you know, partnership, looking for, uh, you know, people that would help me produce my film, but I still want to be involved, like uh, directing, writing the script. But, but, you know, to be really successful, you need a team. Uh, so as I say, I have actors that, you know, want to work with me. I have musicians. So one of them that did the music to, to my first one, he's actually a world famous musician. So it's amazing how you can start from nowhere and get these people on board if you're clear about your vision. I think a lot of people are going to be very, very attracted to your story and your vision and, and what you do. So if there are people out there that would like to you know, find out more about you or work with you or, or understand a bit more about your, your system, you know, you've got your how to boost your film, um, yeah. how to boost your brand with film um, uh, uh, approach. How, how could they get in touch with you? Well, you know, as I said, also, I do enjoy sharing my passion a lot, actually. I think it's the most fun thing you can do to market yourself with film too. It's a really creative thing. So, so uh, I started sharing this in, in, you know, free webinars where I show people how to do their branding stories to make it visually attractive, but also, you know, most of all, to create the right content. Uh, and then I also actually have a, a mentor program where I, you know, where I help people to, to start using like different channels and, you know, making different kinds of content and, and you know, to get results the way I have. So, so uh, I really enjoy that too, like mentoring. And that is something that I also aim to continue with, uh, but I will probably be automating some of my deliveries. So it will give me time also to be more creative myself. And for some select clients, I will also be making films because I enjoy that still a lot also. But, uh, you know, I invite people to come to my Boost Your Brand uh, Facebook page where I also share tips around marketing and films uh, and, and uh, where I put up, you know, webinars. So there's one coming up now soon. So if you, you know, like my Boost Your Brand page, you'll see also what I have there going. In for, I'm going actually to England now even to have an offline event, which is kind of unusual. But my daughter lives in England right now. So I think it's fun to interact and network with a community in England. So, and that's open to anybody. And that's also something I want to say to your target group, that you don't have to be restricted to the country where you live. It's really easy today to travel. It's fast and you can deliver a lot of your stuff online. Even in Sweden, I deliver a lot online. I have workshops and, and even, you know, consulting, you know, at the computer on Zoom. So it works beautifully. So I'll put, I'll put the website address, I think it's qlfilmdevelopment.com, also in the show yes. notes, as well as your Facebook yes. page. And yes, and I also have a YouTube channel, uh, which you'll find also on my homepage, Nassim QL, actually. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, Nassim, it's been a real pleasure talking with you. I want to thank you very much and, uh, and uh, promise me that we'll, uh, we'll do this again in the future. Yes, great. It was great being with you here. So, uh, and thanks a lot. And I wish you also success with your interview series. And I'm sure you'll meet a lot of interesting people <laughs> and perhaps help them come in contact with each other because that's really good beginning too. That's our aim. That's our mission. Thank you yes. so much, Lucy. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.